What's up guys? How are you all doing? Hey, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be checking out one of the coolest things I have built in a while and that is going to be the Iron Man Mark L chest arc reactor that's from Infinity War Endgame. This thing is going to be awesome to build fully 3D printed and also can charge your cell phone. That's right, your cell phone can be charged from this thing. If that sounds like something you'd be interested to and you would like to check out how to build it, stay tuned because it's coming up right here, right now on M.I. Sperry. Okay guys, so it looks like we're gonna be uh, 3D printing some parts here. So first things first, I've got uh, this wonderful uh, 3D model from uh, Thingiverse. So links down in the description for the original model. I actually took this one and modified it a little bit uh, to accommodate the charging circuitry that's gonna be in it. So what I ended up having to do is I ended up having to make this top piece about a quarter of an inch, a little bit longer. So that way it can actually uh, do its thing and diffuse the light where you don't just see this big blast of light right in the middle. It actually spreads it out across the whole thing. So I modeled the battery to make sure the battery is going to fit. And then I also uh, adjusted this. I could uh, build up the side and make the dimensions to where uh, this would sit flush. Also on this side, I'm using one and I'll show you here in a little bit, but I'm using one of Adafruit's micro USB ports here. So I modeled up the board size so I could uh, model in some studs for it as well as model out a channel for that USB charging to sit. Okay, so to start our bill of materials, we've got the uh, DF Robot MP2636. Now DF Robot is not sponsoring this video. I just chose to use this uh, module. So if you can find one of these anywhere else, um, Go for it. I just found mine at DF Robot. It was easy to find it. Next up is a uh, boost regulator is what this is. So it'll take anywhere from two volts and boost it up to 24 volts if you want to. That's gonna be for these little guys. I found these little automotive uh, bulb replacement LED uh, arrays. The resistors on the board and things like that are designed for 12 volt systems. Hence why I chose to go ahead and just incorporate one of these little guys in there. So next up on the list is a LiPo battery. I chose a 2000 milliamp hour battery. That's our battery. Now to mount this to your chest, I figured I wanted something comfortable, something that uh, you could like wear all day at a con or something and it not be a problem, okay? So it's not chafing or anything. And I found these, these cool replacement heart rate monitor soft strap. This thing works perfectly and having the snaps on there gives you something to anchor the device to. And we'll see how that goes together later in the mechanical portion of all this. And last but not least, we're gonna check out, we've got a micro USB breakout board. This is so that we can relocate the uh, micro USB port that is on this thing. Got one of these little guys. Uh, you saw that in the model. So uh, that way I can relocate that with no problem. All right. Okay, guys. So we got the uh, basically electronics portion uh, printed out here of the little deal. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and stick on our LED array link down in the description and we'll get this all stuck down and check the size of our fittings since we've got our different channels here for the different fittings. Okay guys, so what we're definitely gonna have to do is with this little guy, what we're gonna do is this is the uh, board from DF Robot that's a power boost and charge module. What we're gonna be doing is remoting this port and that part. So we're gonna remote both of those ports. So first thing we need to do is we need to desolder both of these. So let's head on over and desolder it. Okay, so we got this all, seems to be all put together. Um, I'm probably gonna take some good old Kapton tape 
put it around this guy and maybe turn this guy upside down just so I can get things to fit. We're gonna go ahead and use some servo tape and tape our battery down and we should be able to start wiring everything up. Okay guys, so one thing that I noticed that I didn't do, let me zoom in a little bit, move this over, let's move the camera a little bit, there we go, is I didn't notch this out um, for the wires. So I'll update the model, it'll be in the description below, but I'm just gonna go ahead and use some pliers, and just cut it out. If you download the model from the link down below, it won't have this problem, so just letting you guys know what I'm doing. Okay, so things are coming along pretty good. I got this all taped in. I think that's gonna work. We should be able to do it. Here's my two plugs. However, I just happen to think I'm gonna put a little bit of a modification in. I'm gonna add a switch to it where I can turn this front LED panel on and off. Since it draws so much current, I wanna be able to switch it on and off so when you're not using it, you can turn it off. So to do this, what I'm gonna do is I've got the back plate here that goes on. So this is basically like a clamshell once it goes together it's going to go on you know like so of course i've got some wires i gotta tuck in let's tuck those in so it's going to all go together like like that okay so what i noticed is there's some space here i think i can take one of these little micro switches and glue it in right in the side there and then that way it'll be good so we'll go ahead and add that in Okay, so it looks like we're getting fit together. We got our switch that's in here. Turn it on and off. So we should be good to go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to run some of this tape around the edges and just, you know, give it a good stick down. Now I got to thinking before I completely stick this down permanently, I need to figure out how we're gonna mount this to our chest. So I've got one of these simple heart rate monitor cables linked down in the description. And it's got these neat little snaps on them. I grab this real quick, an M3 standoff. All I had to do is just take one of, you know, something to poke with and just stab right through the center of the snap. This way I can get an M3 nylon uh, standoff to screw in to there and we can basically fill this with um, with hot glue to make sure that it stays hey guys just wanted to break in real quick just to say that I ended up abandoning that idea of using the standoffs and what I ended up doing is just using screws and just pushing the screw through the back basically this way and into that slot that I pushed the hole in and then gluing them in so I didn't use the standoffs it made it way too wobbly and so I didn't use the standoffs. I ended up just putting the screws uh, straight through it. Okay, so very interesting setup here. I have 3D printed, I don't know if you can see this, but this is basically gonna be the lens. The only problem is, is it's, believe it or not, it is too clear. So what I'm gonna do is I have set up this kind of a jig using some PCBs 
and I'm going to use some hot glue and I'm basically going to coat this in hot glue. We'll see how this works. I'm going to use a tongue depressor to scrape the hot glue and make sure it's all evenly coated as best I can because hot glue will dry kind of this weird opaque color and it will actually probably help it diffuse. So we're going to give that a shot. It may work, may not. If it doesn't work, I'll just print it again and I don't know, maybe rough it up with sandpaper or something. I don't know. But anyway, here we go. Okay, well, it didn't work out as well as I had hoped, but I got, I still got other things, other plans. I think if I can keep it gelatinous with this, I might be able to spread it uh, with this guy. Turns out it's pretty sticky, so I'm gonna use a new one. Here we go. Okay guys, so after some trial and some error of different things, I think I got it. Now the, the weird, I don't know if you can see that, there's some weird blue in there because I just have some tape holding the lens in because as I was heating it with the heat gun, I ended up uh, warping the uh, plastic, but I think it still looks pretty awesome. So um, I think that's gonna do it. What I ended up finally doing after I spread that glue out, it looked like I was kind of getting used to it. As I would spread it, it would make smears. And then if I hit it with the hot air gun, it would actually melt those smears away. So I could kind of smear it out and then go over it and it would kind of level out. And it's not exactly level, which I think is a good thing because it causes the light to scatter more. So it actually does really good. What I finally did was I took some white spray paint and just kind of dusted uh, dusted the back of it with it. Not a lot, but just dusted it with white spray paint. And I believe that looks that looks quite good. I think that's gonna be perfect. So let's go ahead and get some tape on it, uh, or I'm gonna probably run some glue down the sides. I'll take this stupid painter's tape off and run some glue on the sides just to glue that lens in so it doesn't fall out. And then we should be good to go. Okay, guys, well, we got the final final. So I've got the tape peeled off of it. Looks pretty darn good. So let's go ahead and seal her on up. So I'll make sure and get this lined up as I put this together. And of course, have to make sure, use something small, make sure it lights up. All right, excellent. Okay guys, so I've got this thing put over here on the bench here, so I got it beside me. So let's go ahead and we're gonna test something that I wanna test. I wanna see if this can run a Raspberry Pi. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with a Raspberry Pi Zero. So I've got one of these because these don't take a lot of power. So if you can run a Raspberry Pi Zero, then the next step to this would be creating a uh, helmet with a HUD inside of it with a Raspberry Pi HUD because you can do that with augmented reality, which is what we're driving for here. So I would love to have an arc reactor chess piece that powers a HUD, which could be used with a Raspberry Pi Zero and using some augmented reality. So you can see where we're going with these videos. So let's see if it'll actually power this. So I'm going to go ahead and power this puppy up. Or at least turn on the light. You know, you gotta love the light. The light's cool. But I want to see if it can handle both the light and powering this up. So let me grab a cable. So we got a power cord. So I'm going to hook this up. Plug this into it. And then I will plug in the Raspberry Pi. Okay, now, the only problem is I don't have a switch box so I can dual this because I put a new HDMI camera in. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to cut video feed here and go over to the Raspberry Pi Zero because I wanna see it boot. I wanna see if it'll have trouble. Now, we're gonna take the power that's from our guy and we're gonna plug it in. Oh, I got an LED blinking. There's the Raspberry Pi menu. I think it's gonna boot. It's gonna boot. Oh, that's so awesome. Okay, so we can run a Raspberry Pi Zero off of our chest piece arc reactor that we've made. All right. So guys, well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's been a lot of fun to make. Uh, hats off to the people down at Thingiverse that uh, initially uh, had the uh, 3D prints of this, even though I modified it a little bit. And you can find both links down below for the original unmodified version of the arc reactor check piece, chest 
piece as well as uh, my modified version on my GitHub. So guys, thanks a lot. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video because that helps out the channel quite a bit. If you'd like to also help out the channel, check out the new t-shirts. We've got these cool engineered or engineered t-shirts um there's quite a few uh different types of them so out there so for whatever discipline that you think you might want to be or that you are you have a t-shirt for you i'm adding new ones all the time i take suggestions down in the uh, comments but definitely check out teespring down below and get yourself one of these cool t-shirts uh, and show off your engineering pride uh by getting one of these with whichever discipline that you are a part of all right guys so check that out also uh make sure to check out my patreon uh that definitely helps helps support the channel and brings you videos like this, helps me afford Raspberry Pis and LED matrixes and things like that to be able to bring you these videos. So definitely check out my patron, uh, become a patron today and you can uh, get some free stuff with that. You get free merch, you get free t-shirts. Got some other giveaways that'll be coming up, um, different sponsors to sponsor the different videos and things like that to help out the channel. All right guys, thanks a lot. We'll see you next time.